Eu, eu uh, aproveito para uh, fazer uma pequena apresentação do Capca. O Capca já esteve connosco uh, de outras vezes. Uh, é uma ativista pela via entendendo uh, que tem sido exemplar na sua, na sua atividade. Uh, é, faz parte do Centro de Independência de Sofia, acho que é. E tem sido, e é também, foi também, e é pertence neste momento ao Conselho da Rede Europeia de, para a Vida Independente. E passo a palavra a Capca para te dizer como é que é no seu país, como, como é que está a situação, como é que evoluiu, como é que começou. Uh, e tem a palavra. Thank you. Thank you very much, George. Um, it's, it's such a pleasure for me and an honor, of course, to see you all guys. Um, some of you not for the first time, others, unfortunately, um, remotely, uh, only um, in terms of a picture. Anyway, I had the pleasure also to be in Lisbon um, a couple of years ago, and I have very, very vivid memories of these times, and I hope that um, there will be a chance for us again to meet. And the conference I was in Lisbon for was also <clears throat> memorable. Um, however, I couldn't stop the guys from the government to leave the room of the conference before listening to uh, some major key presentations. Um, still, I think that uh, many of us will remember that, uh, that conference in Lisbon. Um, now let me move on to the uh, situation in Bulgaria. Um, as a matter of fact, um, okay, I, I, I would, like to ask the interpreters for favor if i am um speaking too fast please let me know in the chat box i will follow it i will try to to look at it and if uh, if you write something i will um yeah i will um, uh, consider it i will try to to me uh, to speak slowly so that um, you guys can uh, cannot be too tired after after my presentation. Uh, <clears throat> so, independent living movements in Bulgaria uh, started in 1995 when the Center for Independent Living uh, in Sofia was established by a bunch of active disabled people. Um, uh, who have heard about independent living after a visit um, to the United States. It was the very beginning of my country moving out of the communist regime, which happened in 1990, and the total segregation of disabled people hidden in uh, places far from um, communities, far from human eyes. And we, uh, we definitely uh, started with promotion of um, accessible environment, of course, personal assistance and uh, self-determination, um, as well as the right to uh, live um, independently on equal basis with everybody else. These were difficult times and as I look back, I can't see much difference um, more than 25 years, uh, in, in, in 25 years um, now. However, more people, including disabled people, know about independent living. Uh, more and more people uh, uh, complain about lack of accessibility but still, people do not have personal assistance as it should be. 
and this is the topic of my uh, presentation in a minute, and they do not enjoy um, equal rights as everybody, as all other citizens. Um, if I come back to, uh, okay, I have a presentation. Can somebody help me uh, with uh, showing it? I sent the presentation yesterday. Am I supposed to share my screen? No, I can't. Ah, yeah, share, share the screen. Is that what, what I'm supposed to do now? See, see, yes. Okay. Let me see. Okay, here, there it is. Okay, do you, do you see? The presentation. See the screen. You do see. Okay. So how the whole personal assistance uh, story started in Bulgaria? It started with a pilot project back in 1999, when uh, Center for Independent Living got uh, got some funding from. The, a Dutch donor to test the personal assistance scheme as it works in um, um, in its golden standard, and the golden standard, as we all know, is the Swedish standard. So we started it with thirty disabled people residing in Sofia um, who were invited to participate and monitor the developments in their life. Um, the conditions that were set up for participation in this project was uh, to undergo individual assessment of needs. That wasn't uh, easy to do, but there was a, a, a couple of days training for applicants to participate in the project, how they should approach their needs assessment process. And we suggested that everyone will uh, somehow observe their daily life uh, over a week time and see how much time do you need to get out of bed, to take a bath, to have breakfast, to go to work or to school or whatever you want to, and um, to make, to buy groceries or to go to a party. So um, everyone was invited to do assessment of needs and negotiate with the, um, uh, with the steering committee of the project, the number of hours they need uh, uh, for personal assistance on monthly basis. There was a limitation of uh, using relatives as personal assistants for no more than 20% of the hours needed. Actually, they, these were hours for personal hygiene or more, uh, more, uh, more intimate uh, activities, um, which people somehow um, were confused to, um, to use um, somebody outside the family. The minimum, uh, the, 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 the per hour rate, the salary of the assistant was fixed on triple minimum salary per hour rate on the basis of a tripartite contract. So that was a contract made between the Center for Independent Living as the legal employer of the assistant, the user as the manager of the assistant, and the assistant themselves. Everyone was allowed to have unlimited number of assistants, as many as they, they wanted to have, 
uh, considering the, 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 the number of hours which were allocated to the person for the month. So if I, I had, for example, if I had 60 hours a month, I could have had as many assistants as I wanted to and pay them as much as I want. But the, the only, the, the limit was 60 hours multiplied by the tripled minimum salary for the country per hour. Everyone was uh, absolutely uh, bound to report the hours which the assistants work. And people who had more than one assistant, they reported for all assistants. So that CIL as a legal employer knew how much money to pay to each and every assistant. And there was some an extra requirement for these 30 disabled people to be participants in a campaign promoting personal assistance. Actually, this last requirement wasn't really necessary because everyone was willing to join the campaign because everyone saw how their lives uh, became different. With uh, having the personal assistance they wanted, they needed, and um, under the conditions that um, made them really masters of their daily lives. What were the outcomes of this project in 1992, uh, 1999? Sorry, the project uh, was four years long. So in 2003, um, we, uh, we figured out that actually as disabled people, we can use the experience that we got with personal assistance to draft our legislation. And that, that happened. Um, we drafted the legislation, which first of all, we uh, offered to the local authorities to pass it as local regulation on assistance for independent living. Um, and it, it exactly reflected our experience uh, over these uh, four years of project duration. However, the municipal council, which is the legislative power on local level in Bulgaria, totally twisted the whole idea. And uh, now the regulation exists. It is still in action, but it, it has nothing to do with personal assistance. The, the rate per hour is very low and actually people cannot find assistance on the market for this money, which uh, local authorities give them as uh, for personal assistance. So it's, uh, um, it, it, the, the whole idea was uh, totally replaced with the idea of giving money to the family, which later on was uh, duplicated also on national level with a National Personal Assistance Act, which was passed in 2018. Now, this experience, was it a good news or otherwise? I will be honest with you, as I always have been, and it, the, the honest reply is otherwise. It wasn't good news. Uh, because regardless of the fact that we have National Personal Assistance Act, um, it has nothing to do with personal assistance um, as per the UN Convention, it's Article 19 or General Comment 5. 
And even today, what we can uh, observe in Bulgaria is that disabled people are afraid to take responsibility for their life. Uh, because independent living uh, is about rights, but also about responsibilities. Disabled people remain too dependent on the families, which of course, the, uh, the, the, the current schemes contribute to this dependence. Given the low rate of payment, it is very difficult for everyone to recruit personal assistance on the market unless people can add to this money. So if the government provides, for example, less than three euro per month uh, per hour, um, you, you can't find an assistant for less than five or six euro per hour. So people add out of their pockets, those who can afford it. But most of the disabled people cannot afford that kind of thing. So they either go to an institution or they keep this money in the family and their life isn't changed at all. Poverty and unemployment continue um, among disabled people to be higher than other population which is a result of education gaps and public attitudes, unfortunately. Access, um, the environment, built environment transport, also a cultural environment continues to be inaccessible. And unfortunately, a lot of disabled people gave up fighting, which is the worst news because even if we fail, which is normal, I mean, people fail, not only disabled people fail, and we cannot move on fighting, continuing our fights and, uh, and the battle. Actually, actually, this is a war. This is a war for human rights of disabled people. Uh, then that's the, 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 the worst thing that can happen. On the part of the government, one can easily and certainly say that there wasn't and there is still no political will to set up a real personal assistance scheme. It's easier to keep the, the policy design paths which are known, which are traditional, which are based on the approach of one size fits all. So if they give assistance, like in a couple of categories, you will see that in a minute, then everybody gets the same. Regardless of the fact that some people may not need that much, others need much more. And the last and worst thing was that the whole discussion, the whole public debate, um, and the whole policy debate was dominated by service providers and families, which were both agents were supported by the government with subsidies or benefits. So the situation isn't good, even though the Bulgarian government is very proud to announce across Europe that they, they passed a personal assistance act in Bulgaria. And they really did formally, formally they did pass. And it happened in 2018. Um, but this political act uh, followed very long and visible protests and here, I want to have your attention. Protests of parents, mostly mothers of disabled children. There were very few, I would say, 
almost there were no disabled people involved in these protests. These protests were parents' protests. And that was very bad because on the one hand, parents are something sacred. Parents love their children. And the society has respect to parenting and it's normal. On the other hand, parents could be the worst heroes of disabled people because of the possibility to be overprotective. So as a matter of fact, this piece of legislation, which is called Personal Assistance Act, is a national scheme for family care, which is which boils down to cash allowance for caregivers in the family. Just because uh, many reasons, but one of them being the very low um, per hour rate of payment. So the, the Bulgarian Personal Assistance Act has nothing to do with the nature of personal assistance as a tool for empowerment and independent living of disabled people. So disabled people were neither involved nor even heard in the process of drafting the law. I was the one going in and out, um, promoting real personal assistance, um, demanding uh, certain provisions to be included, like for example, restriction for family members to be personal assistants. And I was cursed. I was severely cursed both by parents and the government because um, I, was, I was wrong in their, in their perceptions. So actually disabled people were not involved uh, in this process. It's really sad. How does personal assistance law work in Bulgaria? Well, personal assistance is provided on the basis of needs assessment, which gives individual applicants certain number of points, which are supposed to reflect limitations in daily life. And these points are then transferred into hours, meaning hours of assistance needed for each and every one. There is a ceiling of 168 hours per month. And this ceiling, this maximum um, number of hours is assigned basically, and I would say only to people with multiple disabilities. So people who have uh, both uh, physical uh, intellectual disabilities, maybe hearing, I know, um, I know such person. And, um, and they are very, very, very few. <clears throat> there have been four categories of beneficiaries established by law, which is law, medium, high level of dependence, and fully dependent person. And these four categories were also linked to um, the medical diagnosis, medical assessment of the impairment. People with the lowest dependency needs are given two hours a day. The next level is assigned four hours a day. High dependency needs, people with high dependency needs are allowed six hours a day and fully dependent people get eight hours a day, but here is something important, five days in the week. So nobody knows what people do over weekends or holidays, because if assistants are not from the family, they, they, are, not, they are not supposed to work um, more than eight hours, uh, and uh, and um, 
uh, on weekends or holidays. But this question is not posed again at all. So this shows how by definition, by very uh, assumption of the law, it is made for family members. I would encourage everyone who has uh, questions to ask them now or maybe later. I don't know, it depends on you, George. Mm -hmm. However you moderate this, uh, this event, but I'm ready to answer any question. Well, um, nós ainda não temos aqui nenhuma questão uh, no, no Ok, chat. ok. Não sei se, uh, se queres continuar a tua apresentação por enquanto e, e vemos se surge... Yeah, uma... I get... Ok, perfect. Ok, sure. So, per hour rate is calculated with a reference to the minimum monthly salary for the country. And as of January 2021, it will be 5.2 leva, which is less than three euro per hour. I bet you guys will not be able to recruit a PA in Portugal for this money. Less than three euro per, per hour. And this, uh, this amount of three euro per hour, as you can see on the slide, results from the monthly uh, uh, minimum salary, which will be 650 leva. You can divide everything by two, which is divided by 22 working days a month, eight hours a day, and there is a factor, a multiplying factor of 1.4 on the grounds of the minimum monthly salary. So it's less than three euro per hour. And this is really far from the rates that will allow recruitment of PAs on the market. Actually, the double of this rate is the minimum, the starting point for negotiating potential assistance, double of this. So people, if people want to have assistance outside their families, they have to add up. Um, and if they cannot afford it, they have no assistance. Or they are stuck with their families. Um, the, the, the whole scheme is funded by the national government so the personal assistance money goes from the national government to the municipalities. Local authorities with their social services make contracts with the PAs, which have to be recruited by the disabled people. And these are usually relatives. Actually, there was a research a sort of uh, evaluation of the scheme at the end of year one, at the first year of um, implementation of the law. And the research showed that 97% of the PA users under the law uh, have their PAs within the families. So, and, and there is no surprise about that. Um, then local authorities are expected to receive monthly reports um, from the assistants signed by the personal assistance users, and they are supposed to transfer the salaries to the PAs. For all these activities related to management and administration of personal assistance, municipalities are not given extra money. They are supposed to do all this within their current budgets. So they, they see that as extra work for no money, which of course reflects on the quality of work they provide. 
So the aftermath of the law implementation, as I already started, the majority of beneficiaries have a relative or assistant, as I said, 97%, according to research commissioned by the Ministry of Labor and Social Policy. And these are usually mother or father. The quality of life that disabled people live remains unchanged. And there is no surprise about that, because if you live with your parents and you're totally dependent on the parents and they, they, they just get more money for being your parents and, and helping you, nothing can change. So disabled people have the same life as before, but the family budgets are slightly higher. Nobody can get rich with the PA money. That's not the point. But disabled people cannot have a new and in a better life either. So the PA arrangement, as it is by law in Bulgaria, results in a triple dependence between the disabled person and the family. And this is the worst part in, the, in, 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 in my whole presentation. The first one is the physical dependence due to the impairment. A person cannot get out of bed without somebody to help. And if there is no one else but parents or relatives, people that we live with, then it's a, it's a, it's a total dependence. The emotional dependence, which is also normal, because these are our our parents, our relatives, our family. And on the top of this comes financial dependence due to the inflow of cash to the household. And this closes the entire circle of dependence for life. And that's terrible. How does independent living movement respond to this? Actually, disabled people never went out to protest against this arrangement because it was understood in a way, or it was assumed that by going out and protesting, we would stand against moms and dads which was neither politically correct nor acceptable for many people. Moms and dads never encouraged their disabled uh, children or family members to speak for themselves. Actually most, not most, all of the speaking, all of the talking, all of the, uh, of, 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 all activities were done by the families. Disabled people were kept home. Furthermore, disabled people do not feel safe and confident having assistance outside the family, which might not be approved by the family. Because usually disabled people, and actually not only disabled people, but um, this is a matter of culture, people live quite long together with their parents. It's not like in Sweden, for example, that at the age of 18, uh, children leave um, the, the home of, of, um, of the parents and then go for weekends or for lunch uh, when they finish the money, for example, at the end of the month. We live together. So it's, um, and it's even more the case when a person has impairment. Uh, and that makes um, people uncomfortable um, and unconfident to have uh, uh, an assistance outside the family uh, because they, they need to have the approval of the family. And secondly, um, family may, may look somehow uh, discouraging for disabled people to give money out. If people have money at their disposal, 
or, or assistance, the family would expect them to keep the money in within the family budget. I'm talking about most of the families and I'm talking about most of the cases. There are exceptions, but they are really exceptions. Paternalistic culture reinforces the anxieties of disabled people who might have also encountered uh, management related problems. For example, how to manage the time allocated to assistance, how to manage um, the payments, et cetera, et cetera, because this is a responsibility as I mentioned in the beginning. And finally, there is no peer support provided, which may address the concerns and fears and worries of disabled people and encourage them to take control of their daily life with a PA which is extremely, extremely important. And I, I, I was really glad to share this Bulgarian experience, which is not within the, within the, 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 the genre of good practices, but what I usually say that people learn from their failures. And it's very important to be able to share our failures uh, to share bad examples and learn from them as much as from good examples. Thank you very much for your attention. And I'll be with you guys. Obrigado, Sapka.